They line up an hour ahead of time, mostly women, dressed in bright colors because the show has told them that looks best on camera. They've come to Midtown Manhattan to see a woman who started in local news back in the 70s and is now a household name. With a beaming smile, Meredith Vieira is making her way in the murky waters of daytime television, where the competition is more plentiful than ever before. On the set of the show that bears her name, we found Meredith Vieira feeling the pressure. I don't regret doing this, but there's, it's, there's something about it that's very nerve-wracking, and, and my name is everywhere. I didn't want to call it the show, the Vieira show, precisely because of that, because it's just, it's it reminds me that there, the weight is on me. And that doesn't yeah. mean that we don't have a fabulous staff. We do. They're great. Um, but at the end of the day, if this whole thing falls apart, it's really me. And if she were to fail, Meredith Vieira knows she'd be taking a lot of people down with her. More than 100 come to work on her show every day, taping six shows a week. There is the technical staff in the second floor control room. An in-studio band. In and the stage managers and production assistants, who all make it seem so easy. How's it going? You know, I don't look at how if it's. I don't know how it's going ratings-wise because I never look at that stuff. I don't want to be. Never. No, I because I'm. I would. I wouldn't be able to handle it well, you know, because I would if. If one market were really bad, that's the only thing I would think about. I wouldn't. Another market could be great, but I go, yeah, but, but. So it's better for me not to know. The show draws about one and a half million viewers a day, about half of the ratings of daytime leader Dr. Phil. But the executives in charge say they're committed to helping Meredith grow her audience. She is genuine, smart and funny, and she's nice, always greeting the studio audience after a taping. The people who work here, as I was waiting for you to, to, come, out of, uh, to come out of back, say she's too nice. She's too, too nice. nice. She's, she's talking with the people in the audience. They kept apologizing to me. Don't worry, she'll be here in just a minute. She'll be here in just a minute. And, and, and your stage manager said, she's too nice. That's her problem. Is that a problem? No, it's not, it's not that. It's that, you know, these people go out of their way to come here. And the least I can do is, you know, say hello to them and thank them. The problem is you open the floodgates. You can't say hello to one person and then turn your back on everybody else. I, particularly when I was doing the Today Show, those people would come and stand outside. Mm -hmm. Their parents had come and stood outside. Oh, yeah. Their grandparents. I mean, there was a tradition. And they were a part of the show. So you had to acknowledge you, it would be wrong not to. And that's the way I feel about this audience as well. Do you miss news? There's yeah, so much yeah. of it right now. Yes and no. Yeah, I know. When, when there's a big story going on like Ebola or ISIS or something, I do. Yeah. Um, and we try to incorporate it when we can within the body of the show. But it's hard when you're not day of. When you're not live, uh, we've done interviews where, and then the next day, the piece still isn't on, and something breaks on that story. Right. So you really have to be careful mm -hmm. uh, not to be too um, current. Now she'll have another television season on which to build. More laughs and more stories from a TV pro who can now say she's done it all.